Hi, I'm Holly, and with my sister Heather, you're listening to Haunted Family Podcast, a weekly podcast about the paranormal, unsolved mysteries, and even some true crime. And this is definitely true crime. A little warning about this episode, it's probably going to be one of our more graphic and gruesome episodes, so if you aren't into that, don't listen to this episode. Yeah, if um, rape and torture and kidnapping are triggers for you, I suggest you stop right now, Um, don't listen any farther, and just catch up with us next week. This episode is like real life saw movies yeah yeah it's it's bad um as we mentioned in last week's episode um one of the deputies that showed up at the site um vomited at 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 the scene of this I, i don't even know at the scene of the toy box it um i mean it literally made her ill so that's the kind of thing that we're getting into this week. Yeah. And um, that's the topic of this episode, the Toy Box Murders. And Yeah, see that sounds so nice and sweet, doesn't it? Toy well, Box Murder. You kind of think, um, I'm sure some of our listeners have read or watched the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. And whatever the guy's name in the movie had a pleasure room. Well, this guy had something similar. It was his torture room. And it was bad it was bad it um it was a soundproof storage container on i think like a shipping container yeah like 12 feet by 25 feet or something like that yeah um on his property and inside he had um one of those exam tables from like gynecologist offices yeah ropes and chains and pulleys and saws saws and medical equipment um some stuff he had specially made and every every victim woke their first time in the room to hearing the same recording yeah much like the saw victims would come to to the saw you know, tape, I think, uh, I think you know, the writers of Saw actually were inspired by David Parker Ray. Um, yeah, although the dyslexic in me has been calling him David Ray Parker. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, every victim was greeted to this. Hello there, bitch. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrists and ankles chained, gagged, probably blindfolded. You're disoriented and scared, too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal under the circumstances. For a little while, at least, you need to get your shit together and listen to this tape. It's very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you, in detail, why you have been kidnapped, what's going to happen to you, and how long you'll be there. And the recording goes on from there. Um, You can actually find the recording online if you want to listen to it i don't recommend it but Uh, hey do you want to read the whole thing or do you want me to read the whole thing yeah i mean i kind of feel like it's one of those important things like it yeah it i don't it's this it's it's hard guys this is a painful i remember when i first heard about this case and it's still painful yeah i and, well, I mean, we'll get into it later on, but like, really, people drop the ball on this one. Um, okay, pick them back up. I don't know the details of your capture because this tape is being created July 23rd, 1993, as a general advisory tape for future female captives. The information I'm about to give you is based on my experience dealing with captives over a period of several years. If at a future date there are major changes in this procedures, the tape will be upgraded. Now you are obviously here against your will, totally helpless. Don't know where you're at, don't know what's going to happen to you, you're scared, or you're very pissed off. I'm sure that you've already tried to get your wrists and ankles loose, and you know you can't. 
Now, you're just waiting to see what's going to happen next, and you probably think you're going to be raped, and you're fucking sure right about that. Our primary interest is in what you've got between your legs. You'll be raped thoroughly and repeatedly in every hole you've got, because basically, you've been snatched and brought here for us to train and to use as a sex slave. Uh, sound kind of far out? Well, I suppose it is um, to be uninitiated. But we'll do all of that in time. It's going to take a lot of adjustment on your part. And you're not going to like it a fucking bit. But I don't give a big rat's ass about that. It's not like you're going to have any choice about the matter. You've been taken by force. And you're going to be kept and used by force. What all this amounts to is that you're going to be kept naked and chained up like an animal. To be used and abused any time we want any way that we want and you might as well start getting used to it because you're going to be kept here and used until such a time as we get tired of fucking around with you and we will eventually in a month or two maybe three it's no big deal my lady friend and i have been keeping sex slaves for years we both have kinky hang-ups involving rape dungeon games etc and we found that it is extremely convenient to keep one or two female captives available constantly to uh satisfy our particular needs we are very selective when we snatch a girl for use of these purposes and it goes without saying that you have a fine body and you're probably young maybe very young because for our purposes we prefer to snatch girls in their early to mid teens sexually developed but still small bodied scared shitless easy to handle and easy to train and they usually have tight little pussies and assholes they make perfect slaves any time that we go on a hunting trip if we can't find a little teenager we usually start hitting the gay bars look for a well-built big-titted lesbians i thoroughly enjoy raping and screwing around with lesbians and there's not as much danger of them carrying a sexually transmitted disease and i don't like using condoms also even though they're a little older. Unless they've been playing with dildos a lot, they still have tight holes between their legs, like the younger girls. If we can't find a lesbian that we want, we snatch anything that is young, clean, and well-built. We very seldom come back empty-handed, because there's plenty of bitches out there to choose from. And with a little more practice in deception, most of them very easy to get, with little risk. At this point, it makes little difference what category you fall into. You're here, and you're going to make the most of it. You're going to be kept in a hidden slave room. It is relatively soundproof, escape-proof, and it is completely stocked with devices and equipment to satisfy your sexual fetishes and deviations. There may or may not be another girl in the room. Occasionally, for variety, we like to keep two slaves at the same time. In either case, as the new girl, you'll definitely be getting the most attention for a while. Now, as I said earlier, you're going to be kept like an animal, and I guess I've been doing this too long. I've been raping bitches ever since I was old enough to jerk off and tie little girls' hands behind their backs. As far as I'm concerned, you're a pretty piece of meat to be used and exploited, and I don't give a flying fuck about your mind how you feel about this situation. You may be married, you may have a kid or two, boyfriend, girlfriend, a job, car payment, fuck it. I don't give a rat's ass about any of that, and I don't want to hear about it. It's something you're going to have to deal with after you're turned loose. I made it a point never to like a slave, and I fucking sure don't have any respect for you. Here your status is no more than that of one of the dogs, or one of the animals out in the barn. Your only value to us is the fact that you have an attractive, usable body, and like the rest of our animals, you will be fed and watered, kept in good physical condition, kept reasonably clean, and allowed to use the toilet when necessary. In return, you're going to be used hard, especially during your first few days, while you're new and fresh. You're going to be kept chained in a variety of different positions usually with your legs or knees forced wide apart your pussy and asshole is going to get a real workout especially your asshole because i'm into animal sex also both of those holes are going to be subjected to a lot of use with some rather large dildos among other things and it goes without saying that there's going to be a lot of oral sex on numerous occasions you're going to be forced to suck cock eat pussy until your jaws ache and your tongue is sore and you may not like it but you're fucking sure gonna do it and that's the easy part. Our fetishes and hang-ups includes stringent bondage, dungeon games, and a little sadism. Nothing serious, but uncomfortable and sometimes painful. Just a few things, just a few little hang-ups that we like to use when we're getting off on a bitch. Hey, hey, you're a young teeny bopper and ignorant about fetishes and 
Deviations. Well, you're about to get an enlightening crash course in sex. Who knows, you might like some of it. It happens occasionally. If we want to take the time and trouble, even under these conditions, most bitches can be brought to orgasm. Now, I've already told you that you're going to be here a month or two, maybe three. And if you keep us turned on, it's up to my lady. We'd keep you indefinitely. She says it's just as much fun and less risky, but personally, I like variety. A fresh pussy now and then to play with, and we take four or five different girls each year, depending on our urges, and sometimes accidental encounters. Basically, I guess we're like predators. We're always looking. Occasionally, some sweet little thing will be broke down on the side of the road, walking, bicycling, jogging. Anytime an opportunity like that presents itself and it's not too risky, we'll grab her. Even if we've already got a captive in the playroom. Variety is definitely the spice of life. Now, I'm sure that you're a great little piece of ass, and you're going to be a lot of fun to play with, but I will get tired of you eventually. If I killed every bitch that we kidnapped, there'd be bodies strung all over the country. And besides, I don't like killing a girl unless it's absolutely necessary. So, I've devised a safe alternative method of disposal. I have plenty of bitches to practice on over the years, so I've pretty well got it down pat, and I enjoy doing it. I get off on mind games. After we get completely through with you, you're going to be drugged up real heavy with a combination of sodium pentanol and phenobarbital. They are both hypnotic drugs and will make you extremely susceptible to hypnosis, auto-hypnosis, auto and hypnotic suggestion. You're going to be kept drugged a few days while I play with your mind. By the time I get through brainwashing you, you're not going to remember a fucking thing about this little adventure. You won't remember this place, us, or what has happened to you. There won't be any DNA evidence because you'll be bathed, both holes between your legs will be thoroughly flushed out, and you'll be dressed, sedated, and turned loose on some country road, bruised, yeah, sore all over, but nothing that won't heal up in a week or two. The thought of being brainwashed might not be appealing to you, but we've been doing it a long time, and it works. And it's the lesser of two evils. I'm sure that you would prefer that in lieu of being strangled or have your throat cut. Okay, undoubtedly, somebody's going to be looking for you. There may or may not be a missing persons report, but nobody's going to be looking for you here. They don't have any idea where you're at, and you don't even know where you're at. We're always very careful about that. There are not going to be any knights in shining armor coming to rescue you. You are strictly on your own, and under the circumstances, I bet that is a scary thought. If there is another girl in the room, she won't be able to help you either, because she's going to be in the same position you're in. As for escaping, I'm sure you'll try to find, figure a way out. That's human nature, but it's not hardly even worth talking about here. It would not be prudent on our part to have you running around in the woods screaming rape. It would be an embarrassment, to say the least. Consequently, you are going to be kept in an environment that is more secure than a prison cell. If it has not already been done, very shortly a steel collar is going to be padlocked around your neck. It has a long, heavy chain. It is padlocked to a ring on the floor. The collar will never be removed unless you are turned loose. It's a permanent fixture. The hidden playroom where you're going to be kept has steel walls, floors, and ceiling. It is virtually soundproof and has a steel door with two keyed locks. The hinges are welded and there are two heavy deadbolts on the outside. The room is totally escape proof, even with tools. Any time that you are left unattended in the room, your wrists will be chained and there are electric sensors to uh, let us know if you try to move around too much. And if it's not enough, there are a closed circuit TV system with a surveillance camera, and it's wired to the main TV in the living room so we can check you once in a while, or just sit and watch you for the fun of it. Electronics is a wonderful thing. Expensive, but hell, everything in this room is expensive and damn well worth it. If everybody knew how much fun it was to keep a sex slave, half of the women would be chained up in somebody's basement. Anyway, we've had a lot of practice at this, and I'm not really concerned about you escaping. You are fucking sure not going anywhere. Now, if you're not already naked, you soon will be. Your clothing will be bagged up and saved until such a time that we decide to turn you loose. As far as being naked goes, you might as well get used to it, for you are going to be used, for clothing would just be in the way. Besides, I like watching a naked woman's body, all of it, whether it be in the room or on a TV set. And as I've said, you'll be fed and watered on a regular basis and not much of either as you're used to. I'm sure.
but enough to keep you healthy. You're only going to be fed once a day, like the rest of the animals, and during the first few days until you adjust to it, your stomach shrinks up. You're going to feel a little weak, and you'll be hungry all the time. It won't take long, three or four days, and during the first few days until you adjust to the environment, I prefer to keep you in a weakened condition anyway. Now, you already know that you've been kidnapped and brought here for us to use and train, use to use and to train and to use as a sex slave. I realize that being abducted and being forced into sexual slavery is a hard pill to swallow. Some girls really have a lot of trouble with it and I'm sure that you will to a certain extent. Face it, you can't get away and you can't say no. You're going to be naked all the time. You won't be able to struggle or resist. You're going to have to lay there and take it, good or bad, no matter what is being done to you. A scary thought? Yes, but there are no options. Nothing that you can say or do will change the fact that it's going to happen. Many girls beg and plead. Almost all of them cry a lot, especially during the first three or four days, and some of them scream and threaten. But I have a poster on the wall in the playroom, and it says it all. If they're worth taking, they're worth keeping. And I'm going to tell you, just so you know, since you are being kept here against your will, you will never trust it. We will never trust anything that you say, do, or promise. You are a potential threat to us and will always be treated as such. On numerous occasions, bitches have told me that they'll do anything I wanted them to do if I just take their chains off. And I've been offered ransom money, and I've even had girls tell me that they liked it. But I like to use the chains. Money's not that important to me, and massacres are rare as hell. I wonder what your scam's gonna be. Not anything that I haven't heard before, I bet, but if you get a chance to talk at all, well, let's just change the subject a little bit. You already know that, for the most part, you're going to be kept in the playroom, but once in a while, we will take you... We will take a captive to the bedroom, in chains, of course. Also, we have a couple of real close friends that we party with once in a while. They know about our hang-ups and don't have any problems with fucking a slave. You may be required to service them occasionally, but that's an easy one. For the most part, just fucking and sucking. They don't get into the heavier stuff. However, when we have a party, sometimes I like to put on a little show that you won't like at all. You'll be taken into the living room and put on the floor on your hands and knees naked. Your wrists, ankles, and knees and hips will be strapped to a metal frame to hold your body in that position. The frame is designed for doggy fucking. Your ass up in the air, sex organs exposed, your tits hanging down on each side of the metal support bar, knees spread about 12 inch position. Similar to that of a bitch dog in heat. Right in the middle of the floor so we can sit up on the couch and in the chairs and watch. I'm going to rub canine breeders musk on your back, the back of your neck, and on your sex organs. Now I have three dogs, all of them male because I don't need any fucking pups. One of them is a very large German Shepherd that is always horny and he loves it when I bring him into the house to fuck a woman. After I let him in the house, he'll sniff around you a little bit and within a minute he'll be mounting you. There's about a 50-50 chance on what hole his penis will get into, but it doesn't seem to bother him whether it's your pussy or your asshole. His penis is pretty thin. It goes in easy, but it's about 10 inches long, and when he gets completely excited, it gets a hell of a knot right in the middle of it. Now, I've had slaves tell me that it feels like it, they've got a baseball inside of them, and it doesn't take long. He's going to hump you real fast for about 3 or 4 minutes, and while he's doing it, he'll wrap his front legs around your chest to hold him in position. And in the process, he'll probably scratch your tits up a little bit with his claws. But after he gets through, he usually turns around and tries to pull out. Or he'll jerk a little, not much, mostly just steady pressure. And I've timed it. The knot will usually shrink in enough time to come out of your pussy in about three minutes. If he's in your asshole, it'll be about five minutes. I don't use the dog all that often, but I don't deprive him of pussy either. There's no doubt that he's going to be on you a few times while you're here because I like watching it. And anytime it's just you and me and the dog, it will always be in your butt. The dog knot on his penis is big and extremely uncomfortable when he's pushing it back and forth way up in your anus. I really enjoy watching a girl wiggle, jerk, and squirm while he's doing it. Consequently, I give him a little uh, assistance getting in the right hole. Now, if you think of all this stuff is sick and depraved, you haven't seen anything yet. This is a different world amongst a small circle of friends, living little things like rape, kidnapping, and doggy fucking. Stuff like that are everyday occurrences. Matter of course, here anything can happen and often does. We like living in the mountains because it's quiet, secluded, and private, and everybody minds their own business. The only close house being 
belongs to our friends and they don't hear or see anything okay let's talk about uh, your training the rules and punishment here you are a sex slave and discipline is extremely strict you're going to be given a set of rules things you can and cannot do and you will learn to comply because each time you violate a rule you will be punished as soon as each rule is told to you you will be it will become a law as far as you're concerned and you know what's going to happen every time you fuck up well you will use a couple of methods of punishment a whip is an excellent training aid so is electroshock machine anytime you get out of line one or both will be used on your body and I assure you it will not be pleasant there is not many rules and they're easy to remember but you're going to make mistakes every slave does I don't like repeat offenders. It gets me very upset. During the first few hours, the first time you violate a certain rule, and then here the tape recording skips, a teaching process. The second time you violate the same rule, you'll be lightly punished, and the third time you violate, it's going to be full punishment. After the first day, we won't cut you any slag, and we will expect total obedience. Now let's start this off right. You're a slave, and you don't realize it yet, but you will eventually. I'm your master, and the lady is your mistress. You will be totally docile. You'll be very quiet, and you'll speak only when spoken to. Never initiate conversation. Keep your mouth shut any time that you are spoken to, and you will be required to respond, and it will be with proper speech. Remember that we are in the dungeon game, and as long as you are here, it's the only game in town. Any time that you ask a question where there is a yes or no answer is required, you will respond by saying, Yes, master. No, mistress no master etc and you will show proper respect having to use the word master or mistress may sound funny or petty or vain to you but that's all right if you choose not to do it you can laugh while you're being whipped or when your body is convulsing under the electroshock machine you will respond to commands without protest or resistance do exactly what you're told nothing else remember that here you are a slave and failure to respond to a command will definitely get you in trouble if you decide if I decide to rape you in your pussy or in your asshole, don't resist or struggle. When I tell you to spread your legs or to pull them back, you say, yes, master, and obey the command. Because to do anything less will get you beaten. If I tell you I want to be sucked off and you say, yes, master, and open your mouth, I love oral sex. If it's done right. And you're going to be taught exactly the way I like it. How to use your lips and tongue will be practicing a lot of each. When I get ready to come, I'm going to push my penis down your throat and keep it there until I get through squirting. I am not going to choke you, but you need to learn to hold your breath and to swallow every bit of the sperm. If I see one drop leaking out of your mouth, I'm going to punish you. Basically, it's going to be the same with the mistress. If she demands oral sex and you say yes, mistress, and respond, she also will teach you exactly the way she likes it, and you will keep using your tongue on her pussy until she gets off. Now, I can't foresee what kind of bitch you're going to be, how you feel about oral sex or any of that shit, but I'm going to tell you this. If during oral sex or any other time you should bite one of us, I'm going to cut you, cut on you a little bit. I'll cut your nipple off for a starter. And if it's a bad bite, I'll cut your tit off too. That may sound harsh, but your teeth are serious weapons. And we're not going to tolerate any shit from you. I have been bitten and I have cut off nipples, so don't fuck around. That's enough about that. Remember the commands, yes master, no mistress. If your mistress should come into the room and tells you to get down on the floor or to lay on the floor, you say yes mistress and then lay on the floor exactly the way she told you to do. If she tells you to pull up your knees, you say yes mistress and pull up your knees. If she tells you to spread your knees, you say yes mistress and spread them wide apart and hold them there so she can play with your pussy using dildos or whatever. A slave must always be obey every command and offer no resistance remember that never say no unless it's justified like in response to a question if either one or both of us decide to put you in a different bondage position the chains will be taken off and ver uh, various parts of your body wrists and ankles never off of your neck don't kick struggle or resist in any way if you do you're going to be in a world of hurt if you're told to hold on or if you're told to hold your leg out so the chains can be attached to your ankle you say yes master or yes mistress and hold your leg out for repeat rule violations and punishments are eventually going to become harsh and even brutal and you won't have anyone to blame but yourself now i should also tell you that 
There's going to be times when the whip and electroshock is used not for punishment but for our pleasure. The difference will be that when it's done for pleasure, the whip strokes will be much lighter. They'll be they'll sting like hell, but they won't have that burning sensation that leaves welts and hurts for hours. As for the electroshock machine, the voltage will be turned down. It won't be that harsh electricity that makes your body convulse and jerk all over the table. You haven't experienced any of that yet, but I'm sure that you will. To avoid these punishments, you're going to have to be very quiet, very docile, and very obedient. And I imagine that's going to be hard for you to do. You'll probably try us a few times to see if this is real. Most captives do. If you want to be my guest, because it's all part of the game. Now let's discuss talking. You cannot talk. You cannot speak unless you have been given permission. And I believe that rule gets more bitches in trouble than anything else because they can't keep their damn mouth shut. They also want to whine, beg, plead, and try to talk me into turning them loose. I used to listen to it. I don't anymore. I enjoy blessed silence around here and your mouth is for sucking, not talking. The only time I ever want to hear you initiate speech is if you have to use the bathroom, and you will learn to do it properly. Master, may I please use the restroom, or Mistress, may I please use the restroom. In response, we will ask you what you need to do. If you have to pee, you say pee, Master, or pee, Mistress. If you have to crap, you can say crap, Master, crap, Mistress. It will be done that way because quite often you will be in heavy restraints, a lot of straps in your body, chains to your wrists and ankles, and a bunch of stuff that's time consuming and hard to get loose. If you have to pee, we'll use a bedpan. If you have to shit, you may have to hold it a while. Whatever the case, we need to know. And you definitely need to tell us because if you make a mess, you're going to be punished and you'll have to clean it up. Now I've covered the basics pretty thoroughly. You know to keep your mouth shut and not to try to talk. You know proper way to say mistress and master, and you know you're expected to act and respond to commands. If you can learn to do all of this, there will not be a great deal of punishment, and we'll get along pretty good. There's going to be a lot of things done to your body besides just fucking and sucking. But for that, for the most part, you'll either be in stringent bondage and strapped down to a gynecology table, or you won't be able to struggle or resist anyway. Now, you're going to be required to learn fast. Training is not one of my favorite things to do, and I prefer fucking around with slaves that's already trained. I've already given you the basics, so there's not that much to learn. But until you accept the fact that you are a slave, you're going to have problems with it. Remember that each time you fuck up, you are going to be punished, and after it's happened a few times, you are really going to dread it. Some girls tend to be a little rebellious, and I sure as hell wouldn't advise that, because it will get you in serious trouble. Here you are definitely in need you, here you definitely need to be docile. You're not in the position to be otherwise. We've done this so many times that we know exactly what we like to do with a slave and we don't go out of our way to brutalize a girl. If you don't give us any trouble, we won't do any more to your body than is necessary to satisfy our sexual needs. Initially, when we have a new girl in the playroom, we're kind of like a kid with a new toy. You are fresh and exciting and we're going to spend a lot of time playing with you. Later, after the newness wears off, things will settle down into something of a routine. We'll only be spending three or four hours a day in, in the playroom and you're going to have a lot of free time to rest, sleep, watch TV, or whatever. If you're acting halfway decent, you'll be left in a reasonably comfortable position so that you can relax. As far as sex goes, your mistress is going to want her pussy eaten a couple of times a day. For my part, I like getting off on the slave twice, sometimes three times a day, usually in her mouth or in her asshole. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to be sticking my dick in your cunt once in a while, too. But for the most part, when I use that hole, it's going to be with a large dildo. We're going to be in and out of that room several times a day, but you will have a lot of free time. Now, I gotta tell you that there's another side to this coin. Once in a while, we get a bitch that is resentful, rebellious, and won't mind or cooperate. That doesn't work here. I am sure that you realize that you're on thin ice. And as long as you have chains on your body, don't try either one of us. It is an extremely dangerous thing to do because, if necessary, I'm capable of doing things to your body and torturing you in ways that you can't even imagine. The playroom is equipped with a large set of surgical instruments, which I have had occasion to use and will again if necessary. I've already told you what will happen if you bite, but to be completely safe here, you have to be docile. If you should accidentally or otherwise hurt, scratch, or kick either one of us, you could be in very serious trouble. I'm sure that you want to survive this experience, and I want you to also. 
but you are expendable. And it's no big deal to go out and snatch a replacement. It may sound harsh and cold, but if you give us much trouble or if you pose any kind of threat to us, I won't have any qualms about slicing your throat. Like I said before, I don't like killing the girls that we bring here, but occasionally things happen. What can I say? I would really hate to have to dump that pretty little body off in a canyon somewhere to rot. I'm not trying to scare you. That's just the way it is. Be nice. Keep your mouth shut. Learn the rules and survive. We are into S&M and you're going to be hurt a little. But everything we do to a girl is designed to cause pain, not injury. There is a big difference. No matter how painful it is, nothing that we plan to do to your body will cause any serious or permanent damage. I am not lying to you or trying to make it sound easier because that would be pointless. I'm telling you, I'm telling it like it is. That's the way we do things and that's the way it's going to be unless we have a problem with it. I've already told you that you're going to be whipped lightly for pleasure. The electroshock will be used lightly for pleasure. Most of the other nasty little things that we're going to do, for the most part, will be done to your breasts, nipples, and between your legs. The lady is fortunate. She can get off any time. She just likes to be a little sadistic with a slave once in a while. In my case, I cannot get off with a girl unless I hurt her first. That's basically the reason I'm into rape and slavery, and the reason that you're going to be subjected to a certain amount of pain. Mostly, what we do is to a captive is stick needles in her breast and through her nipples, through her cunt lips, and through her clit. I am into stretching certain things. Clamps with long nylon cords on each will be occasionally placed on your cunt lips so your pussy can be pulled apart, and they're also going to be attached to your nipples. The nylon cords will be put through the ceiling rings or rings on each side of the table and pulled very tightly to your tits. Occasionally, your clit will also be clamped and stretched, and we're going to be using dildos. The dildos are going to be used a lot, more than anything else, and consequently, what you're going to have the most trouble with. Many of them are long, very large in diameter, and very painful when they're being forced in. Your mistress will use them in your pussy, and I like to use them in both holes. Actually, that pretty well covers it. There's going to be a few little things that we do. Nothing of greater consequence, and not often, just variety. As far as needles go, they'll always be sterilized. The clamps are going to hurt like a motherfucker, but they won't cause any permanent injury. They won't even break the skin. As far as the dildos go, both of the holes have been... Both of the holes between your legs will be stretched a hell of a lot. It'll hurt and they'll stretch. Your pussy is designed for baby to come out and it won't be, we won't be using anything much bigger than that. The really large one I will not use on your butt. I don't want to stretch that hole so big that it's unusable for fucking. Anyway, that pretty well covers that part of it. Let's see what I've missed. Let's talk about screaming. Every once in a while we get a screamer. Some bitch that just wants to scream all the time. And it definitely gets them in trouble. Because it gets on my nerves. Very shortly the gag is going to be removed. And we live in an isolated area. So screaming is not usually a problem. In the playroom there, it's not much of a problem at all. Because of the soundproofing. But it irritates the fuck out of me. There is a time and a place. Occasionally, I like to hear a bitch scream, but usually not. The only thing that screaming is going to get you around here is a lot of punishment. And if you do it habitually, I will just keep a ball gag on your mouth at all times. It'll only be taken out for you to eat and suck. I've already told you about talking. Don't try to initiate a conversation. Don't say anything. You will be punished. If you're a smoker, now's a good time to quit. I'm not going to buy your cigarettes, and if you ask for one, the only thing you're going to get is a few whip marks. Remember, when you ask a question, you say yes, master, or no, master. If you have to go to the restroom, it's master or mistress, may I please go to the restroom. Any time that you are given a command, always acknowledge the order verbally, yes, master, and then obey the order. That's not too difficult. A bright little thing like you should be able to learn it real fast. There are going to be times when you are under stress, a certain amount of stress, and you may forget. So, it's no excuse. Each time you fuck up, you're going to be punished. After you're here a few days, it'll eventually become automatic and they'll no longer be a problem. I realize that after a while, when I take the gag off, you're really going to want to try to talk to me. Talk me into turning you loose and such. It's because with your wrists and ankles chained, your mouth is your only defense. But don't do it. It won't work, and all it will bring is punishment. 
The first day here is not going to be too difficult. There won't be any serious dungeon games. Your training has already been initiated, so you'll have to be very careful what you say and how you act. But for the most part, there's going to be a little exploring. We will become very familiar with your body and do a little fucking and sucking. We may tease you a little with some of our more humane toys, but nothing serious. There's going to be kind of an adjustment period. Don't say anything, don't struggle or resist, no matter what we do, because we are going to start enforcing the rules immediately. Now later, I'm going to be asking you a bunch of questions, and since I'm going to be caring for your body for the next month or so, or three, there are certain things that I need to know. I have a prepared questionnaire that that I will fill out with every new captive. Some of the questions are going to be embarrassing, but you should answer them truthfully and completely. You damn well better. I don't want to catch you in a lie. The questions will be in reference to your physical condition, any medical conditions that I need to know about, medicines, sex habits, sexual preferences, any childbirths you might have had, period dates, and so forth. Now your training has already started and each time I ask you one of these questions on the questionnaire there's going to be a proper way to answer it and I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. While we go through the questionnaire you're going to be strapped down to the gynecology table. Your feet will be in the stirrups and your knees will be pulled wide apart with everything exposed. I like a girl to keep I like to keep a girl that way while she's answering the question so I can examine and verify uh, anything that she might tell me which would affect her use as a sex slave. If you do have any kind of medical condition, by all means, let me know. We'll discuss it and may make adjustments. We won't turn you loose, but we may make adjustments. We're probably going to be starting on this questionnaire pretty soon. You will be naked, and as I said, you'll be strapped down to the gynecology table, and you can't wiggle or squirm around. You will be talking quite a bit answering these questions, so I'm sure that we'll start in your speech training at the same time. Consequently, before we start the questionnaire, two small electrical lamps will be placed on your nipples. Each time a question is asked, you will respond properly. For instance, if I ask you how old you are, you will respond by saying, Master, I am 19 years old. Answer the question completely and say nothing else. If the question requires a yes or no answer, yes, Master, or no, Master. If I ask you for your period dates, you say, Master, my period is so-and-so. If I ask you about childbirth, you say no master or mistress. I always start each sentence by saying master and take your time. We're not going to be in a hurry. Things about what you're going to say. Think about what you're going to say before you say it. Because each time you fuck up, I'm going to press a little button and send a few thousand volts of electricity through your nipples. Right down into your tits. You are in training. So it will be a little quick blast. I am not going to hold it down to torture you, but each time you screw up, it's going to be a little bit worse. So take your time, answer the questions properly. I'm not going to push you. We're not going to be in any hurry. Think about each thing you're going to say and be damn sure to start your sentences with master. If you get through all of that okay, get your speech down pat and keep your mouth shut and don't give us any trouble. The first day is going to be real pleasant for everybody. I'm going to put some dildos in those holes between your legs. But they will not be big ones. Basically, I want to become very familiar with your sex organs and the size of the holes. All girls are different. During the course of the day, you're going to be raped several times, but that's no big deal. The second day, after you get totally familiar with the rules and procedures, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. A lot of it will be very pleasant for you. But you might as well get used to it because it's going to be like that for a while. Eventually, things will settle down a little. Then, just take it day by day. Well, I believe I've told you everything that I can. I cannot predict the future. I cannot predict changes of procedure. But if the tape is being played for you, I have to assume that it is still reasonably accurate. And I can only give you advice. Be smart and be a survivor. Don't ever scream. Don't talk without permission. Be very quiet. Be docile and obedient. And by all means, show proper respect. That's rough. That was hard to read. And that's why I just wanted to read the first paragraph. <laughs> okay. One thing about David Parker Ray is he kept meticulous um, records on all of the girls that he took. He had locations that he picked them up at, everything that he did to them. It just ended with he didn't say where he released them or what he did like how if he if he killed them if he let them go 
The records just didn't say that. Um, he actually kept a um, copy of American Psycho in the torture chamber. He was a big fan of the book. I thought that was kind of interesting. It is. So, I, I think it's worth noting that David Parker Ray... Why is it that the worst people, like, ever go by three names? I don't know. I mean, you need to think about that. Serial killers... Uh, and I, I should say, we cannot technically call him a serial killer because there's only three confirmed kills with him. But it is speculated that he may have 40 to 60 kills under his belt. Yeah. And a lot of just victims. We do know that several women escaped. Right. Yeah, um, we have we have three women who escaped. And this this is New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, um, he actually he picked up all of his victims from this one bar, the Blue Water Saloon, in his hometown of Elephant Butte, New Mexico. Um, which is seven miles outside of Truth or Consequences. That just sounds creepy. Like, apparently, do we truth, have any listeners in Truth or Consequences? Because it just sounds like a scary-ass place. Apparently, there was this old like game show or something called Truth or Consequences. And the town changed their name because of that. To Why? that. I don't know. That's like that town um, in Montana that changed their name to Joe. I mean, listen, I love Joe Montana, but I would I would not want to name my town Joe Montana. Nor would I want to name my town Truth or Consequences. But, you know, Jeffrey, just the person who lives in Moorhead. Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer picked up all of his victims from a, from a specific gay bar. Um, John Wayne Gacy had a particularly favorite place that he liked to get his victims from. It's very common with serial killers to stick inside their comfort zone. To have one or two spots that they get their victims from. And David Parker Ray was not alone. He did not do this by himself. No. He um, actually had... Um, he actually had help from... His girlfriend, Marie Parker. His, yes. And he is another girlfriend. Um, what was her name? Cynthia Hetty, maybe? And Dennis Roy... Hindi. Yeah, Dennis Roy Yancey and his girlfriend also helped. Right. Um, but I think the most un likely um, help that he had was his daughter Jesse Ray and actually Jesse attempted to turn him in yeah um, she actually told the FBI that her father back in the 80s no yeah back in the 80s yeah, that her father was abducting and torturing women and then selling them into slavery in Mexico and the FBI said that they didn't have enough concrete evidence to launch an investigation that right there was, I guess you could say, law enforcement strike one. And there are several times that law enforcement really catastrophically dropped the ball in this case. Yeah. He could have been stopped years earlier. Yeah, like um, Angelica Montano, she was actually a friend of Cindy. Cindy, that was it. Not um, whatever I said, Hindi. Uh, she was a she was a friend, and sh they abducted her, and she spent four days before she was let free. And she was hitchhiking back to her mom's house when an off-duty cop picked her up, and she told him everything that had happened to her, but he didn't believe her. So there was no follow-up in the case, right? And then um, let's see, and then we have Kelly Garrett. She was abducted in 96 from a bar, from that bar, um, actually with the help of Ray's daughter. Jessie, yeah. Um, they kept her for two days before they slit her throat and dumped her on the side of the road. Now, I think what pisses me off about the Kelly Garrett is that she, that nothing, nothing happened. 
and her boyfriend said that she was out cheating husband. on him. Husband. They actually got divorced from husband. Okay. Her husband said that she was cheating on him and that that was what happened and not he didn't believe her story. So nothing happened. So nothing happened. And it wasn't until um, David Parker Ray was caught that the video of him raping Kelly came to light. And when he was tried for Kelly's rape, the jury said that it was inconclusive. Like, they couldn't tell that she did not want this. Never, never mind the fact that she was being tortured. And that she was drugged. And that she was drugged. <sighs> we'll get to the person who ended up actually... Um, causing his downfall in a little bit in in just a minute um i do want to he had about a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff yes in his in his toy box um he had made a homemade breast electrocutor and he had a fur-lined coffin that he used as part of his torture yeah, I I was debating on whether or not we want to share pictures on our Instagram of his trailer. Uh, probably not. Um, but what I will suggest is look them up. Um, Google toy box killer images and just the the equipment that he has saws and. Um, leg spreaders and I mean just anything that you can think of like a wire brush like any I mean seriously like the stuff is horrendous and most of his victims have never been found he lives in New Mexico which is sparsely populated his works town, for the parks department his town only had a thousand people in it um very close proximity to Mexico um the absolute perfect place to set up something like this. Yeah. And he. I mean he worked for the park. So he knew all the best places. To dump people. Okay so Cynthia. Vigil. Was abducted. She thought. Okay she thought that she was meeting a John. And what really happened was. Um, Cindy the. Girlfriend. Um, uh, jumped out, hit her over the head. They drugged her and took her to the toy box. And I I don't know how long she was there, but she had the metal collar around her neck. And at this point, I believe that she was actually in their house. And um, David Parker Ray went to work, and when he did, the keys to the handcuffs and stuff were laying on a table and she was able to shimmy her hands loose while Cindy was distracted on the telephone. She grabbed the keys, unlocked herself, and at that time, girlfriend Cindy was coming into the room and hit her over the head with a lamp. Uh, Vigil just took off running and as she was running down the road, bleeding naked with a dog collar around her neck um, she comes across two motorists and both of them swerve and drive off so that they don't have to deal with her but she makes it to a neighbor's house not the neighbor who's friends with him right so she luckily made it to a trailer whose door was unlocked and she bursts in and when she bursts in, she tells, there was a lady watching TV, and she tells her everything that happened. And this woman, bless her little saint heart, believed the story and called 911. Gave her something to put on so that she wasn't naked. Well, David and his girlfriend start looking for Cindy, and the cops show up to investigate uh, because... Uh, Vigil tells them, you know, where she was at. And 
they search the toy box. Well, they see the toy box, and it's exactly as she described, and they search it, and... I mean, it's... You know, there's no denying it at this point that that there's something going on. Um, they are taken into custody, and she's taken to the hospital. And that's when Angelica Montano comes forward and says that, you know, the exact same thing has happened to her. But then, you know, she also says that the police didn't follow up. So nobody knew that, you know, that, that anything had happened. Now, that's when we get into the trial and how the judicial system, everybody just, everybody dropped the ball with these girls. And David Parker Ray, he got 200 and some year sentence. 224 years. Yeah. And it was for... Um, and you know what? The sad part is, he died um, the first year in. Yeah. And I say the sad part is because a man like that deserves his freedom taken from him. Oh, yeah. Normally... I'm of the opinion that um, we over-incarcerate in this country and that prison is not a very adequate punishment, but people like him deserve solitary. Oh, they yeah. do. I mean, people like him deserve torture. Sadly, we're not allowed to torture inmates, but... I wish. No, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to say I wish because... We both know that there are innocent people in prison. But he is there not are. one of them. No. Um, Hindi only got 36 years. Which sucks. I think she should have gotten longer also. I don't know. This is a very difficult episode because... Not only, I mean, this is a proof that monsters are real. And I will always say that the paranormal does not scare me. Real no, human beings like scare me. People like him terrify me. I can handle whatever paranormal thing that that type of world wants to throw at me. That's what this this guy is what keeps me up at night. Oh yeah, because you I never mean, know you never know where they are, what they're doing. What can be living people, right next door to you? Well, the house next door to me is for sale, so I doubt it. Well, I mean, the house in front of me is definitely not them, and definitely not the people who's moving into the house on the other side of me, but. The creepy people who are camping on the back side of the farm? Probably. You might, I live, you might want my to neighborhood is everybody's retired, so I doubt that people on my street. But I'm sure nearby. I mean, people laugh at me because I am I'm paranoid about serial killers. I'm I'm always vigilant about locking my door. Like, as soon as we come in, first thing we do is lock our door. Um, it gets dark. The dogs don't go outside to pee. That's, I mean, that's just the way it is. They it have puppy dark. pads. They have a puppy pad. And that's what they use when it gets dark. Um, and, I mean, that that is directly because of the BTK killer. But people don't realize that just little things that you do to protect yourself like locking the door i mean i know that you people can say oh holly you live in a small college town there's no serial killer well you know a couple weeks ago did we not say that charles manson lived in this area he grew up near here so yeah it is possible i'm sure that the population 1000 of elephant butte new mexico didn't think that they were suddenly going to be thrust into the news by a serial rapist slash murderer. 
I mean, you never know what's going on. Yeah, a serial killer was killed by his intended victim not long ago in uh, in West Virginia, not very far from us. Right. And he had he had just moved into that area after being active in Ohio. So, I mean, it's possible. Um, I mean, never say never. Yeah, um, the criminologist John Douglas, who, as anybody who's listened to this show knows Holly and I both love John Douglas. He is one of the people who really got us interested in this. Right. Before we just, we enjoyed reading true crime. We didn't, we didn't realize how interesting the intricacies of all of this uh, is. And I definitely credit him for my sociology minor. Yeah. Um, He theorizes that at any given time, there are 25 to 50 active serial killers in the United States. I mean, and this guy was chief of the FBI's serial crime unit. So, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, if anybody knows true crime, it's him. Yeah. If he, I mean, he knows the mind of a serial killer. So, I, I believe him. And that, that just terrifies me. Yeah, I think, I, I was several episodes ago, we were talking about, or maybe it wasn't several episodes, and maybe it was just something that we said that we should talk about, but the, oh, no, I remember what it was. We recorded it, uh, but we didn't release it. The question and answer with us. Yes. That is. Uh, um, you can get that through paid subscription, can't you? Yeah, but we never really yeah, did anything. Yeah, we never really did it. anything with our Patreon. So we might, we might release that as a bonus episode at some point. Yeah, I think we should. And just do away with our whole Patreon thing. Yeah. We're not really it's diligent just, enough to keep up with it, that. No, we're not. Um, but anyway, that was a really good episode. We really should release it. But one of the questions that we talked about was serial killers that... I, I don't want to say favorite serial killers, but like serial killers that terrify us more than anybody else. And for me, it's this guy and BTK. Yeah, and anybody who, anybody who's ever read anything really about them would have to agree. Yeah. These guys were twisted. Um, I actually, my boyfriend has an issue with not remembering to lock the door. Mm, mine too. At night, when we go to bed. And, or when they leave the house. And he, yes, I'm talking shit about you. Lock your damn door. It, it, yeah, if you're listening, this is about you. I'm I'm writing you out on international podcasting. And I remind him of how many serial killers gain access to their victims just by an unlocked door. Yep, I do that same thing. It must be a guy thing. Oh, we're fine. We're big, tough, strong guys. No one's going to try to murder us in our sleep. Oh, no, I don't hear that. I hear, it's a small town. Nothing ever happens here. Yeah, that's what they all say when they wake up dead. I kind of just want to take a minute and let tell our listeners that, because we, we've done a couple of episodes now where we've talked about people getting drunk in bars. Yeah. Be aware of your surroundings at all times. Because there are, there are twisted people in this world. I have a friend that is a bartender. And then I have another friend who owns a bar. Well, I mean, I guess he is also a bartender. So, I do, on occasion, go to bars. But I always try to make sure that there is somebody responsible that is sober. Please, for the love of God, have a sober friend to get you home if you are not going to be that sober friend. I tend to be that sober friend because I don't like to like I don't like to give up control. In some of these cases, they thought they were with a friend. They were with Ray's daughter. Well, that's true. <sighs> I'm just I'm looking through some of the pictures, and there's 
I mean, one of these pictures, it looks like my animal medical kit with all of the like, scissors and scalpels and clamps and it's crazy to think that these women, that some of these women actually lived through this torture. Yeah. Well, and then to think that some of these women survived and then were possibly sold to God only knows what. I think it's so sad that we as a society want to ignore the fact that sex slavery is very real. I know I've mentioned it on this podcast numerous times. If you live near an interstate, chances are there are women being trafficked out of the hotels near the interstate. You go to Backpage and Craigslist and you see all those girls' escorts available for a good time. Most of them are there absolutely against their will. You know something that warms my heart, While though? in prison... All right. What was you saying, Holly? I said, you know something that warms my heart, though? What? Ashton Kutcher. He is doing so much good things to stop... Um sex slavery and sex trafficking I really I, I don't know I just wish that more people use their money and influence like he's doing you know what him and his wife Mila Kunis have done have used their celebrity status for so much good and it's it's refreshing to see that you know their story is just so cute yeah. he was her first kiss it was on set. It was on set. Oh, um, while Ray was in, let me let me pull that back up again. Because while I was talking to you, I I clicked off my link that I was reading. Okay, so while um. While Roy Yancey was in, was being held, um, awaiting to stand trial for the rape and torture of um, Kelly Garrett, someone passed him a note in prison that says, Rats die in jail. There is no proof that David Ray Parker, David Parker Ray, um, slip the note to him, but right after that happened, Yancey stopped cooperating with in, with law enforcement. And so chances are, yeah, he intimidating he, witnesses. Um, yeah. This this story really hurts law enforcement in particular because they don't have a good track record with dealing with rape in the first place. Right. So often when women and men go to the police, they're not believed. And that was the case time and again with this. It took literally a woman running naked with a slave collar around her neck down the road to get the police to say, oh yeah, there's probably something going on there. Well, I, it, it pisses me off that rape is treated like it is. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised he got 200 and some years because all too often... We've got the Brock Turners of the world that get, what, three, four months? Mm-hmm. A slap on the wrist? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to disrupt your life. And, oh, and, and that's after the women have been drugged through the mud and m made to face their rapist and defend, them, defend themselves. Because the first question is always, well, what are you doing when this happened? What were you wearing when you ha when this happened? What, not, 
you know what you want to you want to eliminate rape well eliminate rapists it's not the woman's fault you should be Stop. free to wear whatever the fuck you want to yeah you know what I see men jog down the road with no shirt on and skimpy shorts you know what I don't do jump out of the car and rape them but this also is proof that we really need to step up our personal protection game he went after certain types of women who appeared to be vulnerable mm -hmm. that he knew that he could easily control and manipulate right well I mean he says that right in the his audio tape yeah. women you need to start empowering yourselves you are not victims you are not weak I mean, speaking of, like, he said you may have broken down on the side of the road. Do you know that, okay, if I'm traveling at night, I've already said my gun is in the car. Well, I mean, if you live in New England, you can't do that because you have to be three minutes away from your gun. But you know what you can carry with you? Mace. And I usually have some on my keychain, which if I'm driving is probably not the best place to have it because then you would have to take your keys out of the ignition. But you know what's in the console right beside me? A knife. Do you know what's in my glove box? Another knife. Do you know what's in my trunk? More knives. I may not always have my gun on me, but I always have a weapon on me. And I'm not saying that that right there means that nothing bad is ever going to happen to me. Yeah, and that's important. Get a weapon. Learn how to use it. But I just want to give myself as much of an advantage as I can. I, I think, honestly, getting a weapon, learning how to use the weapon is important. Right. No matter what that weapon is. And take a self-defense class. Get bear repellent. Bear repellent is like pepper spray but power more powerful and when you're in public try not to let your guard down I know that sounds horrible that we should not be in a society where we have to be constantly be on the lookout but the reality is that there are there are creatures like David Parker Ray in this world there are people like John Wayne Gacy in oh, this yeah. world And we, we can't stop it. We can't make them go away. And that, honestly, is my biggest fear in life. That right there. Serial killers. This whole story of David Parker Ray reads like a bad horror movie. Yeah. Do we have a stupid criminal? Because we need a lighter note to end on. I do have a funny stupid criminal. Yeah. Okay, this one comes to us from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Well, there is a woman who um, has been jogging around a neighborhood pooping. That's weird. Pooping. Um, the She's just pooping outside of people's houses. And the neighbors have taken to calling her the mad pooper. Kathy Budd her, said that her children first saw the lady pooping outside their house. And um, she said, hey. Um, are you really going to poop in my front yard around my kids? And the lady was like, yeah, sorry. And then started running off again. And this has been happening about seven weeks. A couple times a week she will poop in somebody's yard. Yeah. And I read somewhere that the, the house actually put a sign inside, please don't poop in our yard. And that reminded me, do you remember many years ago... Um, that house just on the county line between Morgan County and Johnson County on 172. They put a sign in their yard that says, no peeing in front of my house. Yes, I do remember that. The, the house kind of looked abandoned. Um, so I don't know if people pulled in thinking that it, that nobody lived there and was peeing, but I do believe I vomited there once. I know I vomited there once. <laughs> Do you think that they mistook our puke for pee? Maybe. I don't know how if they would listen to me. <laughs> it's pretty violent. <laughs> so, um, 
they have posted pictures of um, the mad pooper uh, online, hoping that this will deter her from uh, continuing to poop in their yard. But she's still been and, pooping. She has yeah, no shame. They're, well, they're baffled because there's a public restroom that's less than a block away. So, she's pooping in their yard, you know, for a reason. Intentional. I guess. Okay. I don't, I, yeah, I don't know why you would intentionally poop in somebody's yard. I mean, our dog once pooped in Abby's least favorite teacher's yard and I didn't clean it up because, well, I was just being a bitch that day, but. It takes a lot for Abby to have a least favorite teacher. Right, yeah. Abby is the straight A. Everybody loves her. She's ev- everybody's favorite student because she's a uh, type A overachiever. We got our first college acceptance letter today. Who? Where from? Probably- Sullivan. Oh, she can do better than yeah. that. Okay, well. So, that's all we've got today. But if you would like to have your own podcast, uh, we highly suggest Podbean. Podbean is super affordable, super easy, great analytics. Um, it can easily integrate your website, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, anything that you can think of. Podbean can help you. Well, do it. They can, yeah, they can just help you do it. Um, um, gr- literally, great analytics. We can. Yeah. It'll just in minutes we can pull up exactly what information we need. Um, we love it. So easy. I, I mean, uploading is super easy. Like, we recorded a little bit later last week than we wanted to. So it, and it took me a little bit longer to edit than I wanted to. And I was literally Skyping with Ernie last week as I was uploading the episode. And he asked if I wanted him to let me go and like within two minutes I was like oh nope we're all good it's it's going and then he was able to pull it up and download it so that's what what we need because we are not tech savvy individuals no and we need we need fast because we don't have patience so anyway highly suggest Podbean if you would like to use our uh, code that would be great Um, it is haunted family pb yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's, if you as simple as that, as simple as that. Yeah, if you've got a story that you would like for us to um, tell on the podcast, you can send that to hauntedfamilypodcast at gmail dot com. Also, any story suggestions? We are working on our um, the next season which I say season, but we're really not taking a break. So we're really working on the next year of Haunted Family Podcast. So any suggestions, we want to hear them. Now's the time to get those in. Yeah, we will sit down in a week or two and really flesh out, flesh out, um, what uh-huh. what episodes we want to do next year. So We will not be pooping in neighbor's yards while we're doing that, though. Yeah, and so this is the time to um, send us what you want to hear. Or if you have any personal stories, send us your personal stories. We would love to do a whole episode just of our listeners' personal stories. Yeah. And, um, oh, definitely, if you've got a stupid criminal in your area, we want to hear that. I think that's it for tonight. All right. Well, thanks for listening. We hope we didn't scare you all too badly. Yeah. We hope, hope nobody has PTSD from this episode. But if it encourages you, if this episode is what you needed to go out and get yourself trained up, get yourself a firearm, or get yourself some pepper spray or a good knife, then I'm grateful that we did this episode. Because yeah, really, me too. I personally would feel safer if more people carried weapons. Because we live in a crazy world. Yeah, really. And I think that people should have the right and the ability to defend themselves. Right. And I mean, I understand that we have some states that have strict gun laws so that you can't be, you know, as cavalier about it as us. Or some countries don't, because we're international. Some countries don't have as lax gun laws as Kentucky. And in that case, anything is better than nothing. Yes. Um, take some self-defense classes. 
Yeah. We just want you to be... We want you to well, be able to take care of yourself. Yeah. Come what may. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.